Okay, now that we have built our first report, it's time for more theory. Let's shift click, sorry, control click into the filtering, navigation, and uh, talk about filtering and interactivity of Power BI reports. We already talked about how uh, I can mouse over different elements of the chart and uh, see the tooltip update with uh, giving me information about this data point. Um, one of my favorite features of Power, I, Power BI is being able to click into the data element and have that data element filter the rest of the charts on the page so that, for example, now I'm clicking on the green division in my uh, pie chart and I see that my revenue completely has changed. So now it's only showing revenue for that division. If I click on the red division, the chart changes yet again. If I click on a revenue for one of my customer, like big box spenders, that's this customer's revenue, and I can just click on different data elements and see how my revenue uh, is updated um, based on what I clicked on. Uh, sometimes people get confused um, as to how to turn things on and off. So clicking on something selects it. You could see that how it selects it. And then the way to click off is you either click on it again or you click on it and you just click somewhere um, on the white area of the chart and that uh, deselects that data element. So while this feature is super useful and very powerful, sometimes it creates confusion. And uh, you could see how it creates confusion. So for revenue, uh, this works very well. We just see the revenue trend to the right. But when you see the chart below, you could see that uh, some of the things um, may not be making quite as much sense. So clicking on different elements of the chart and um, filtering that way other pieces of uh, other charts on the page, we will call it cross filtering. So let's try to cross filter uh, by our divisions and see what it does to our customer. So if I cross filter on a green division, I can see that the highlighted portion of the bar for big box spender is effectively the same size as the grayed out version. And you can also see in the tooltip, uh, we have a revenue, seven billion and right below we have highlighted for the same amount. Basically what this means is that big box spender um, are only buying from our green division. If I click on the red one, you see that both of these bars are now zero. Basically the, these customers are not buying anything from the red division. Um, and then if I mouse over on the water cleaning international, I could see that before the selection, my revenue was $2.3 billion and after it's 2.2. So uh, Water Cleaning International is buying uh, mainly from the green one, but it does buy, sorry, mainly from the red one, but it does buy something from the from the green. So if I click on the green, you see that um, some portion, 132 million, is actually highlighted for the green one, green division. So far, we're able to make sense out of this. However, things get a little bit tricky when I start filtering by customers. So um, a lot of times when I have big customers and I only have a short amount of customers, this works okay. So if I click on the big box spenders, I can see that now if I look into my revenue chart by division, that um, they uh, add up to about, you know, let's say, um, um, roughly a third um, revenue for the green division. But if I click on a smaller customer, you see that the the portion of the red is very small and you really need to mouse over. It's only 2% um, of, uh, of overall revenue. Uh, I can make this chart bigger and mouse over it, but it's still very difficult to um, to make sense out of it. For now, let's just remember that we can filter things by clicking on different elements of the chart. And then we will talk about how to make this interactivity, this behavior a little bit more friendly to the end users. Let's talk about a new element of the desktop that we have not talked about before. And uh, let's click off, click uh, somewhere on the area where there's nothing, there's no charts, and click on this filter option filter pane. 
This is a fairly new feature of Power BI, and this allows us to have a um, collapse and expand area on the page um, so that we can save some real estate by uh, putting all of the slicers. We did the slicing, um, a slicer in the first report, but we saw that it occupied quite a bit of the real estate here. So um, by putting all of our filtering elements in this pane, uh, we're able to effectively use our real estate more efficiently. Let's see how the filtering pane works. So let's make sure that it's expanded again. And uh, we have several types of filters. Number one is we have uh, ability to filter all pages. So uh, by placing something in this box, we're able to control every single page on our report. The box above it says filters on this page. So by placing uh, my attributes into the into uh, in here, uh, we're able to control only the, the the selected page. So let's say I want to control just this page by year, right? So we have several options. Uh, we could use advanced filtering, and uh, we will talk uh, more about this later. Or we can use basic filtering. And for example, in this basic filtering, uh, right, I just want to see, let's say, three years, 15, 14, and 16. And you can see that now all of the uh, charts on this page are filtered only for these years. I can uncheck uh, 16 and maybe zero in on 12 and so forth. So uh, using this filter allows me to limit the amount of information that will be displayed on my page. How do I delete a filter? Well, that's easy. Um, uh, there's a couple of things here in the top of the filter that allow us to um, to make some changes. For example, I could delete all of my selections, uh, and now you will see the, the page displays all the years. Or I can cl click on this Remove Filter uh, X uh, icon, and that will take this filter out altogether from this page. Please note that when no no uh, chart is selected, then the only options that we have from filtering perspective is add filters to all pages or add filters uh, to all pages or add filters to the um, just the current page. Let's see what happens when we do select the chart. So when I clicked on the revenue by company, um, my filters on this page and filter on all pages options shifted to the bottom. And now I have more options to do additional filtering. So because this chart is created by using a company and my revenue, these two by default are added to, uh, to the filter conditions. So um, what I could do is I could use my basic filtering and um, just pick the customers that I care about. So for example, I just care about a handful of customers like this. Um, I could search, so if you remember, I have this big box spenders, so I can say uh, big and then find big old drillers and big box spenders, and now I only have those two. Again, I could clear it out by hitting a clear filter, like so. Um, the other way for me to do this is I could go to advanced filtering, and I can say uh, show uh, all of the customer that start with the letter W, and then I have to click apply filter, uh, clear it out. And the last option is uh, I can also do my top 10, top five. So the way that works is I pick my top N and then I wanna say show me my top five. And then top five by what? I wanna do it by revenue. So I'm gonna grab my revenue and drag it over here into by value. So the only thing that's confusing here is some, it doesn't um, update the chart right away. You have to click on apply filter and that will then apply the top five um, filter condition on that filter. So um, let's remove that filter for now. So we could say clear filter and now we should be able to see all of the customers back to our chart. 
we can collapse that filter condition for the company and drill into the revenue. And then for the revenue, we can also add additional criteria. So we could say where our revenue is uh, greater than, let's say, um, $2 billion. So I will just put two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three hit apply and now I can see all of our customers with uh, a revenue over two billion dollars let's go ahead and remove that filter condition as well now let's collapse our filters pane again and talk about interactivity so as I said uh, sometimes the default behavior uh, between the chart is less than optimal. So when I'm clicking on these different customers, the impact of that customer to the overall division is tiny and it's very difficult to see. So the ideal behavior in this case would be not to highlight uh, the portion of that customer in overall total, but rather just show um, only um, the portion of that revenue that actually uh, in fact is present in the total. So I know this is confusing, let me explain. So for example, when I click on a green division, uh, there is a bunch of bars here that have zero dollars in them. So maybe the better way to do this is filter those things out altogether so I only see the customers that are selling into my divisions. How do we go about doing that? The way we address it is, we're gonna go into an option of the menu that says Format. And what we will do is we will click on Edit Interactions. You will see that now we have additional icons added to every chart. So the chart that we have selected remain the same and now if I click on revenue by company, you will see that those icons go away. Now I'll click on revenue by day, those icons go away. And then if I click on revenue by division again, they get added here. So um, the way these new additional icons work is they control this behavior, right? So for example, what I wanna do is I want to filter out things that don't live in, that don't uh, exist when I click on this chart. So if I click on filter, you will see the behavior of this chart has changed. So now when I click on different divisions, only the customers that actually do have revenue for that division show up. Okay, now let's change it back into highlight and that's the default behavior. I actually am a big fan of the filter icons, uh, filter uh, behavior for all of the chart. And uh, this behavior could be changed um, if you go into options. I will uh, go over options uh, later in the, in the class, but for now just remember that uh, this behavior could be made default uh, for all of the charts and pages in the report. Another thing of note is that um, our trend charts seems to always work um, based on filter. So, and you can see that this is the only option uh, for this chart. Sometimes what you wanna do is have a chart that's not affected by other charts. So for example, if I only, if I want to show my revenue trend, regardless of what you've selected uh, for my divisions and companies, what I could do is I could click on this stop sign here, none, and now you could see that regardless of what I click on, on other charts, oh, I misspoke. And the reason is, so this behavior is controlled by each individual chart. So this chart does not filter the trend, but this chart does, because right now the filter is selected. So if I don't want this chart to filter my revenue, I need to click on this again. So again, you could see that when you have a lot of charts, this becomes confusing and it's difficult and takes time consuming to go through all the charts and deal with this default behavior. So we will talk later how to turn this whole thing globally for 
uh, all charts and, and, and reports uh, and pages on this report. For now, let's just make sure that um, uh, we will enable filtering from this chart. We will enable filtering from this chart. And then uh, when the driver is the revenue by division, we would want this to be a filter behavior. And when the driver is revenue by company, we would want this chart to be a filter, right? So now you can see how, depending on what I click, I don't have any gray out options. I think that this is a, a cleaner way to tell a story. Once we're happy with how these interactions have been defined, we can click back and edit interactions. And you see those options go away, but behavior will remain the way we have set it up. So you can click on individual divisions, um, the revenue trend updates. Uh, we only see the customers we're supposed to see. And when we click on the company, we only see the divisions uh, from which they've bought our products.